Hello, linear algebra students. We're ready for an extra practice worksheet. This one covers some of the material in section 7.3 and 8.1. We begin with the matrix A. We notice A is symmetric, and we're told it's characteristic polynomial. We would like to orthogonally diagonalize this matrix. Well, you see, just looking at the characteristic polynomial, we can read off the eigenvalues for A. The eigenvalues are 3, 1, and minus 1. So let's find an eigenvector corresponding to each one of these. This is part of the process in diagonalizing. OK, for lambda equals 3, we calculate this matrix, A minus 3i. Well, we subtract threes from the diagonal. This gives us minus 2, 2, 0, 2, minus 2, 0, and 0, 0, negative 2. This is one that you can just kind of see the reduced row echelon form by looking at it. Sometimes we can, and it's wonderful, and sometimes we have to take some steps to get there. So I will just write above here, reduced row echelon form. We see these two rows are multiples of each other. In fact, the second row is just minus one times the first. So that means we will have a row of zeros at the bottom. And then I can take, say, negative a half times the first row and get this. And then this row, we're going to move it to the second row and then multiply by negative one half. And we get this. So this is our reduced row echelon form. We have one free variable. It corresponds to this column. OK, so if x2 is t, then x1 is also t, and we see x3 is 0. For now, I'll just find a basis for this eigenspace, and I'll worry about normalizing it when I go down to write my matrix S. So a basis for this eigenspace, well, we can just take 1, 1, 0, for example. Now let's keep going. We have lambda equals 1. We can find a basis for this eigenspace. I need to calculate a minus i here. We subtract 1s from the diagonal. So I have 0, 2, 0. I have 2, 0, 0. I have 0, 0, 0. Once again, we can get ourselves to reduce row echelon form just by looking at it. Because you see, we can interchange the first two rows and divide each row by two. So we see one, zero, zero. We see zero, one, zero. And then we have this. Well, we just have this one free variable. So here x3 is t. And then x1 and x2 are both zero. So a basis for this eigenspace, well, this one's already unit. We can just take, let's see, E3, that standard vector. We can take 0, 0, 1. Now you see, this vector we have just found is perpendicular to this one. We know that would be the case from theory because this matrix is symmetric, but it's a nice observation. Now we have one more eigenvalue, lambda equals negative 1. So for lambda equals negative 1, we need to calculate a plus i. Find a basis for its kernel. That would be the eigenspace for lambdas minus one. A plus i, okay, we have two, two, zero. We have two, two, zero. We have zero, zero, two. This one's very similar to the first. Let me add the RREF and RREF. Well, we just have one, one, zero. Then we have 0, 0, 1. Then we have here, 0, 0, 0. Rank is 2, nullity is 1, is exactly what we're looking for here. So here we have x2 is free. We have x3 is 0. And then we have x1 is negative t. So a basis for this eigenspace, we can just take say minus one, one, zero, like this, minus one, one, zero. So far, what have we done? We've calculated an orthogonal eigenbasis for the matrix A. 
But in order to have my matrix S be an orthogonal matrix, it means the columns must be orthonormal. So I need to take these three vectors and adjust their lengths accordingly. Let me just label these. If I call this one V1, and I call this V2, and I call this one V3. So then you see, let me move this up. The length of V1 and V3, well, both of these have the same length as the square root of two. And then the length of V2, it's already unit. So the length of V2 is just one. Now I'm ready to write everything down. I can write down matrix S, orthogonal matrix, and I can write down matrix B, diagonal matrix, and it will satisfy either AS equals SB, or like we see up here, A will be SB as transpose. So let's do B first. My eigenvalues go along the diagonal. We have say three, one, negative one, three, one, negative one, and it's diagonal. Matrix S, well, we have our eigenvectors, but make sure we divide by their length to make them unit. So lambda equals three corresponds to V1. This would be one over the square root of two, one over the square root of two, and zero. And then lambda equals one is the next column of B. We will put V2 here. And then finally, lambda equals minus one is in the third column of B, we put V3 normalized in the third column. This will be minus one over the square root of two, one over the square root of two and zero. Now S is orthogonal, B is diagonal, and we have orthogonally diagonalized this matrix. Now we move on. This is a circle all that apply question. I like this question, it makes us think about diagonalization. So A is n by n, we have linearly independent eigenvectors. And then this S is the matrix of eigenvectors, which are necessarily true. Well, S has linearly independent columns, so definitely S is invertible. And then, because we have this S, A is diagonalizable. But we don't know if A is invertible. It all depends, is zero an eigenvalue of A or not? If it is, then A is not invertible. If it's not, then A would be invertible. So this one, I do not know. And similarly, this one, I do not know. I mean, S is just some invertible matrix. It may or may not be diagonalizable. And so we can only circle these with certainty. Number three, we're given a characteristic polynomial. And then we're asked, when is A diagonalizable? Well, we can see the size of A here. This polynomial is degree five. So I'll make that as an observation that A is five by five. Well, when is A diagonalizable? You see, we have three distinct eigenvalues, six, one, and three. Six has Algebraic multiplicity one, necessarily the geometric multiplicity will be one. One has algebraic multiplicity one, necessarily the geometric multiplicity will be one. So A being diagonalizable or not all comes from this one, lambda equals three. So we can remark that the eigenvalue for lambda equals three, the algebraic multiplicity is three. And so A is diagonalizable here. This would be if and only if the geometric multiplicity of this one eigenvalue is also three. And then we would have a total of five literally independent eigenvectors for the matrix A, we could diagonalize. And the next question is about that. If A is diagonalizable, find the matrix M, such that A is similar to M. Well, if it's diagonalizable, then A is similar to a diagonal matrix. And so we could just write down what we would have here. So this is going to be a five by five matrix. Maybe I will start putting the threes here and then one, six, 
and it needs to be five by five and diagonal. So let's fill in with zero so we have a five by five matrix. Well, I think this looks great. So this would be the answer here. If A is diagonalizable, then it will be similar to this diagonal matrix. Number four, this is the last question on this worksheet. And I love this problem. We are told A and B, two different three by three matrices. They have the exact same characteristic polynomial. We wanna figure out is A diagonalizable? Why or why not? Is B diagonalizable? Why or why not? Well, this is a really great question. You see, very much in the spirit of what's above, we know that lambda equals two has algebraic multiplicity one, necessarily geometric multiplicity one. So I can disregard that in terms of figuring out if the matrix is diagonalizable or not. So it all comes down to lambda equals minus one. That's what we need to figure out. It has algebraic multiplicity two. So we can answer yes to either one of these, part A or part B, provided the geometric multiplicity of minus one is two. And if it's not, if it's just one say, the answer will be no. So let's figure it out now. Let's figure out the geometric multiplicity. So in part A, what I need is A plus I. We add one along the diagonal. We have three, three minus three, we have one, one, minus one. We have one, one, minus one. Now, you can probably see the rank of this matrix just by looking at it. The reduced row echelon form is here. Not that I need the, to figure out the rank, but you notice that this matrix, so the rank here is one, as I mentioned, you can also see it just looking at it that each row is a multiple of the first row, say. The rank is one, and so the nullity is two. And so this says that the geometric multiplicity of minus one is two, because this is the dimension of this eigenspace or the nullity of this matrix. And so this says, This says that A is diagonalizable. So the answer here, well, we'll write yes. <laughs> there was a question, is A diagonalizable? And there's my answer, yes, because for this one repeated eigenvalue, the algebraic and the geometric multiplicities match. So all in total, I will have three linearly independent eigenvectors for matrix A. Now we move on. Part B says, is B diagonalizable? Same thing, same characteristic polynomial. What I need to figure out is the rank of B plus I. This will tell me its nullity, and this will tell me the dimension of E minus one. Okay, so let's add one to the diagonal. We have one, one, zero. We have three, one, one. We have two, zero, one. Um, you notice this is definitely not rank one. Let's just take one row operation so we can very clearly see the rank um, without any question here. Let's get zeros underneath this first leading one. So we can take minus three row one, add it to row two. We can take minus two row one, add it to row three. Now what happens here? This is where we will be able to um, not go to full reduced row echelon form, but be on our way to getting there. We have one, one, zero, then subtract three row one from row two. We have zero minus two, one. Now subtract two row one from row three. We have zero minus two, one. Now you see, we can't figure out the rank exactly because these two rows are the same. So this rank is two. And so the validity is one. Now, what does that say about diagonalizability? It says, no, B is not diagonalizable. So the geometric multiplicity 
of minus one. This is just one. And this is strictly less than the algebraic multiplicity of this eigenvalue. And so that gives us that no. The answer is no. B is not diagonalizable. We don't have enough linearly independent eigenvectors. We'll have one linearly independent eigenvector corresponding to minus one. We'll have one linearly independent eigenvector corresponding to two, lambda equals two, but that's not enough to diagonalize the matrix. And this is why we can answer no. Well, this is the end of this extra practice worksheet. Thank you so much, students.